Welcome everyone. Today we're joined by Professor Jeff Dahl from the University of Florida. Obviously we know that you've focused a lot on um, the effects on, of heat stress during the dry period uh, on, on, on cows and in terms of milk yield and dry matter intake etc. Um, but you also wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, the effects on the calf that that cow is carrying, in the effect, effect of the in utero calf uh, that's heat stress during that dry period or that late gestation period. So uh, would you like to outline maybe some of the findings of your research in that? Sure. So the, the cows, when they're heat stressed during the dry period, are going to suffer in the next lactation with lower milk yield. Yep. Uh, but the calf is also significantly affected. So mm -hmm. the last six weeks or so of development is what we usually have coinciding with our dry period because it's a little shorter dry period uh, than you might see here. Uh, but those cows are heat stressed for that entire time. So that calf in utero is heat yep. stressed for that entire time. And when that calf is born, it's born at a lower body weight. Yep. It's gonna remain at a lower body weight through weaning. Yep. And there are also some significant reductions in that calf's ability to take up IgG from the colostrum yep. that yep. it's given. And so their immune status is compromised for yep. the first month or two of life. So nothing positive on the cow, nothing positive yep. about heat stress in utero for that calf. And in terms of impact, say, on milk yield in that calf, when it, for, for heifer calves that actually become mature, mature cows, like, do you have some data on the magnitude of, of the effect on milk yield when those calves, two years later or whatever, become lactating cows themselves? Yeah, we do. So, you know, relatively brief insult of heat stress in those calves in utero, essentially the last six weeks of development. When they calve in two years later, they're gonna be compromised in terms of their milk production. They produce roughly five liters a day less than the animals that were developed in a, a cooled dam for that last six weeks of gestation. So it's a permanent effect, not only in the first lactation, but we've now followed those animals out into their second lactation and beyond, and they never recover. They end up being at about the same body weight eventually as the animals that were from the cooled dams, but we think more of that body weight is probably in uh, less productive uh, uh, tissues yeah. or fat tissue yeah. rather than lean mass. Yeah. In addition, those calves, calves, so their offspring. So the F2 generation. The F2 are less productive as well yeah. versus the calves from the cooled dams dams. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. So I guess if you were to sum it up you would say that the in the dam heat, a heat stress if a, a heat stress effect in late gestation is programming that cow to have lower milk yield for the following lactation whereas it's programming her offspring the in utero calf to have a lifetime lower negative effect on milk yield. Yeah that's a good way to put it. We have effectively program the cow with heat stress during the dry period to make less milk in that next lactation yeah. and uh, we have programmed the calf to make less milk. What can farmers do in Australia to to negative to to counteract those effects? Well the the best thing to do is get those animals cooled off as much as we possible can possibly can. Um, strategies for that might include getting shade into whatever pasture or paddock we have those dry cows housed in. If we have them housed indoors, making sure that they're under shade and if we can, getting them wet and getting fans yeah. over them. Um, that's not going to be an option for all producers, yeah. but one thing that they might want to consider is if they have soakers in the holding pen or at the dairy, then bringing those dry cows in a couple of times a day during the heat of the summer to get them cooled yep. off would be effective. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. That's really interesting results and some really uh, fascinating research there. So we look forward to seeing how that plays out going forward. Thanks, Rory.